So in this video, we're going to determine the determinant, the adjoint, and the inverse for the sample square matrix with the order T here. So first, um, determinant. For the determinant of this one, we can do two methods. We can use the diagonal method or the rule of Sarus. So first, let's try that. So in this case, let's just extend this. 1, 2, 2, 1, 3, 1. Then we make diagonals. So the diagonals going down. This will be all plus. And the diagonals going up. This will be minus, minus, minus. So we do that. 1 times 1 times 2 plus 2 times 3 times 3 plus 3 times 2 times 1 minus 3 times 1 times 3 minus 1 times 3 times 1 minus 2 times 2 times 2. Okay. Solving for that one, we have 2 plus 18 plus 6, minus 9, minus 3, minus 8. And <clears throat> if you try to get that, we would, should get a value of 6. The problem with the rule of Sarus, or the diagonal method, is that it can only be applied for matrices that are 3 by 3 or lower in size. So what if we have a bigger matrix. So in that case, what we can do is the more general method, which we call the method of cofactors. So to get the method of, uh, to get the determinant using the method of cofactors, uh, this is our equation, determinant A equal to AI1 plus, uh, sorry, A i1 plus a i2 a i2 plus dot 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 plus a i n a i n this is we call this is what we call our cofactor expansion along the i throw along the i throw can also do another one determinant a rather than going for the row we can also go for the j column as seen here a1 j a1 j plus a2 j a2 j plus dot 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 plus a n j a n j this one a month we call this uh, cofactor expansion along the J throw. So for these two methods, for any row or any column, we should get the same result for the determinant. So let's try to get the determinant for this one using the <coughs> method of cofactors. So I'll use the cofactor expansion along the eight row along the first row. So the determinant A would then be equal to A11 A11 plus A12 A12 plus A13 A13. So you might be wondering what is this big A here? So this big A here is what we call the cofactor or the algebraic complement and a11 or a i j just equal to negative 1 of i plus j multiplied by the determinant of the minor m i j so what is this minor naman this minor is just the matrix that we remove the i throw and the j column so take for example, go down. Uh, we want to get A11. What's A11? It's negative 1 times 1 
plus 1. Then m i g, this is m 1 1. So we're getting the determinant of the minor. This one. Uh, it's m 1 1. And we're taking off the first row and the first column. So to visualize this, this would be negative 1, determinant. 1, 2, 3. 2, 1, 3. 3, 1, 2. Then we're just removing the first row and the first column. And this is the minor. We'll have negative 1. Then just get the determinant here. 1 times 2 minus 1 times 3. Sorry, this is not negative 1. This should be positive 1. This would be equal to negative 1. Okay. Now let's get, so this is A11. Let's get A12 and A13. A12 and A13. Is equal to negative 1 times 1 plus 2. And the minor is, just write it down again, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 3, 3, 1, 2. And for you to be able to see it clear, I'll use a different U. Okay. So we're taking off the first row and the second column. So this will become negative 1, 2, 3, 3, 2. It will be equal to negative 1 times 4 minus 9 equal to 5. Okay. Now let's get the third one. A13. A13 is equal to negative 1, 1 plus 3. Again, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 3, 3, 1, 2. So I just do this. Uh, this is how I do things because it makes it easier for me to visualize what I'm doing. But you can skip this step if you want to. Then we'll get negative this positive 1 times 2, 1. Sorry. Right. And 3, 1. Determinant of this one. 1. 2 minus 3, you will get negative 1. So in here, we now have values for A1, A1, 2, and A1, 3. Now we can solve for the determinant here. It's our um, formula there. So determinant of A, then be equal to what's A1, 1, it's 1. 1 times negative 1. Small a12 is 2 times 5, the big a12, then plus a13, the third element in the first row, 3 times determinant, I mean the uh, cofactor a13, 3 negative 1. And solving for this one, determinant should be equal to 6. And we see it was the same what we found here which is now six it's the same so we can actually take uh, any other row or any other column and the answer would be the same you should still get six if you're doing the correct method okay so now let's solve for the adjoint the adjoint of a matrix is just a square matrix, which is the transpose of the matrix of cofactors of A. So the adjoint of a matrix with index of N has a size of N. Okay? So if 3 by 3, yung matrix natin, then the adjoint should be 3 by 3 as well. So the first step for this one is we should get first the cofactors of all the elements in the original matrix. So what does that mean? We should get the cofactor matrix of this one, A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, A31, A32, and A33. So you're wondering, what's this cofactor? Ah, it's the one that we computed 
here. So we already found A11, A12, and A13. Let's put it there. Okay. So we get this one. Um, A11 equal to 1. A12, uh, sorry, negative 1. A12 is equal to 5. And A13 is negative 1 as well. So that's from our calculations a while ago. Uh, and then, then we can get for the other one. So for A21, you can just do what we did before. So this is negative 1 raised to 3. Then I'm not going to be showing the complete solution anymore. Uh, writing it down. Second row, first column, 2, 2. 4 minus 3. Get negative 1. For A22, it will be equal to second row, second column, 2 minus 9. 2 minus 9. Negative 1 raised to 4. Equal to negative 7, a to 3, equal to negative 1, raised to 5, 2 plus 3, times the determinant, uh, the determinant of that minor. So 2, 3, 1 minus 6, 1 minus 6 is negative 5 times negative 1 is equal to 5. a 3, 1, equal to third row, first column, 2, 3, 1, 3, this is equal to Negative 1 raised to 4. 6 minus 3 equal to 3. A, 3, 2 equal to negative 1 raised to 5. Then third row, second column, 1 times 3, 2 times 3. 3 minus 6 equal to 3. Negative 1 times negative 3 is equal to 3. And A, 3, 3 equal to negative 1 times 6. Then third row, third column, 1 minus 4 equal to negative 3. Put this here, negative 1, negative 7, 5, 3, 3, and negative 3. So this one here, this is our cofactor matrix. Okay. So to get the adjoint, to get the adjoint here, what we need to do is to take this cofactor matrix and we transpose it. The transpose of the cofactor matrix, we transpose that one, we will get our adjoint. So for this one, transposition, we just flip the positions. So the adjoint, A, D, J, A, and B equal to negative 1, negative 7, negative 3 for the principal diagonal. Remember in the adjoint, this does not change places. Then swap this around to 2. And we should get negative 1, 3, 5, 3, negative 1, 5. And if all was well, this should be the adjoint of our matrix here. Lastly, we can solve for the inverse. The inverse of a matrix follows this definition. They multiply the inverse with the original matrix. We should get the identity matrix for the square matrix with size n. Okay. So not all matrices have inverses. If a matrix does not have an inverse, we call that matrix uh, non-invertible or singular. But if the matrix has an inverse, then it is non-singular or invertible. So the inverse of a matrix A negative 1, A raised to negative 1, is just equal to the adjunct of A divided by its determinant. Okay? So for this uh, matrix here, this was the matrix that we've been using for the past couple of uh, examples. Uh, the adjunct of this one we already have solved equal to negative 1, negative 1. 3, 5, negative 7, 3, negative 1, 5, negative 3. Then we multiply this by 1 over our determinant, which is 6. And putting this all in, the inverse of this matrix, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1, 3, 3, 1, 2, would be equal to negative 1 over 6, negative 1 over 6, 1 half. 5, 6, negative 7 over 6, 
one half one six five six and negative one half okay and to check if this matrix is really the inverse of that matrix you can just use this one a negative one a or multiply this one negative one over six negative one over six one half five over six negative seven over six one half one over six five over six negative one half then multiply it by our original matrix one two three two one three and three one two one two three two one three three one two okay and if you multiply that the answer should be equal to one 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 zero 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 or the identity matrix of with an order three okay so you can try this out and this should be the answer that comes out so with that thank you for watching the video hope you learned something um yeah thank you